Okay, so Wendy, you were just, you're just sharing a little bit about, um, you know, some of the experience that, that you've had. And um, so I'd, I'd love for you to maybe talk to us a little bit about that. And, and I'd mm-hmm. love to hear from Lee as well. But, but the, the, question, the question here is this. Um, what excites you most about biblical counseling? Why, why biblical counseling? Why, why is this something that you're passionate about? So maybe, maybe mm-hmm. when you could just kind of share what you were, you were talking sure. to us about. Yeah. Um, having spent uh, about 18 years in the um, secular counseling world as an infant development therapist, I always sensed, especially when I actually surrendered my Christ, uh, myself um, mm-hmm. late in my 20s to Christ, mm-hmm. and had a growing sense and understanding uh, that I was looking to take um, the issues of life and trying to handle them in a way that wasn't what the creator had intended. Mm. And that when the closer I got to that, the better life went. Mm. Uh, not that it went well mm-hmm. all the time. I just, it just, it made more sense. Not easy, but better. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, that I realized that every time I would do a home visit um, with a family system, and even if I saw a Bible laying there, I was not allowed to say, um, you know, hey, you know, let's open that. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, do you know there's real hope here? You know, your child is dying. Yes, this is horrible. Mm-hmm. This is deep waters. But as along with this, we have a hope. We have mm-hmm. a Savior who's, um, you know, wanting to walk with us. We were never allowed. It was actually considered mm-hmm. more like a psychosis. So um, to have a, a faith, you know, that was part of our, what we, I don't know, it was just... I had a growing sense that it was just really wrong. And so when I heard about biblical counseling training um, back in uh, the late uh, 1998 or something Mm -hmm. like that, that I went, wait a minute, that just resonated, Mm -hmm. you know? And and so since that training and all my journey to becoming certified, it was just uh, this growing passion that Christ was, was the answer. This is the answer. Like we've said in all these sessions, you know, um, this is the real hope that we put in um, to make sense of the stuff of life. Mm-hmm. So. so after so many situations with families that are hurting mm-hmm. so bad mm-hmm. and, and you're not allowed to go yeah. here, like this yeah. is not an option. Yes. Uh, man, that must have been hard. Yeah, it was. Well, I, at one point I just thought this was normal, you know, because that was the industry we were part of. You know, you, you help them fix this, you know, or, or at, at a, a surface level, you help them, you know, maybe behaviorally manage this, or you help them to um, rethink what th- they were going through or whatever, and, and, you know, refer them maybe to yoga to help mm. with those um, sad, sad feelings and things that they were going through, but not really getting to what was going on in their heart right. about it all. And so, yeah, um, yeah it was quite a journey. Yeah. Wow. So, sounds like it. Sounds like it. I'm grateful to be where I am. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yeah. Well, I'm, gl- I'm grateful you're here yeah. and able to speak to us. So that's great. Um, Lee, Lee, um, why biblical counseling? What, what makes you passionate about biblical counseling? I mean, th- there's so much that I feel like I could say here. I, I do feel like I would like to like springboard off of, mm-hmm. of what Wendy brought up, but, um, you know, like dealing with people just out in the world, you know, maybe not even in a church context or in a, in a biblical counseling context, but just out in the world, whether that be just in the workplace, um, or in a secular counseling situation or, or, or whatever it would be like you, you really start to see some patterns in people. Um, and, and I, I feel like I can say that fairly because like I, I work in the church have for a number of years, but, but I've also been out in the world, you know, and like, and if you open your eyes, you see some consistencies about people, um, that, that transcend sociological background, that trans, transcend, uh, family dynamics that transcend, um, faith that transcend just even ethnicity. Uh, It it transcends all of those Mm -hmm. things that bring the nuances and the differences. And you see a commonality when it comes to just the the way the human heart longs for redemption. Mm -hmm. Like, and you you, you see it in the way people live their life. You you see it on reality shows. You see it um, in, in advertising. People like long for atonement. 
They long for redemption. And so just on a basic fundamental human level, just a basic anthropology, like the soul screaming mm. for redemption. Mm -hmm. And then people look for it in a thousand, yes. that would be an undersell, but a thousand different ways. Yes. Um, and so what excites me about biblical counseling is like it points straight to the author of redemption. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so like if, if the soul already longs for that, whether they know it or not, mm -hmm. if the soul already longs for redemption and is looking for that, biblical counseling sets the table for people's heart to, to see perfectly and to look towards Christ mm -hmm. as the spirit illumines that especially, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So um, th that would be one of the big things. Um, I think Wendy speaks to it with far more credibility, just having spent so much time in the secular setting. But, but like when you, when you see that with people, and, and you would know mm -hmm. this too, Nathan, because people from the streets come into your church mm -hmm. and that they're very much secularized. Mm -hmm. I mean, that they, they see things from, from their vantage point and the soul screams for the same thing. They may do it in different ways, but, but I'm convinced the more I deal with people, the heart longs for redemption mm -hmm. and, and will go to great lengths to find it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so so even if you say, well, you can't find it here, they're still going to look for it over here. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm like, okay, well, biblical counseling affords us the opportunity to point people in the direction where true redemption happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so Amen. Amen. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm absolutely convinced of that as well. And, and um you know, it's, it's just it's just so easy for us to be led a, led astray, led a, led away from the fountain of living waters to to broken cisterns and, and seeking uh, to somehow satisfy this this thirst, this hunger in, inside of us at, at all these different places. Meanwhile, here God is, and and he, you know, and, and listen to the way that Jesus talks. He mm -hmm. says, "Come to me, mm -hmm. come to me, come to me, drink, mm -hmm. have, have, be satisfied." Yeah, yeah. Um, so. Um, would you say that your your passion uh, for biblical counseling has been something that has been growing over the years? Uh, and if so, how, why or why not? What, what, what would you say? For, for sure it was a growing thing. And I think uh, what has fueled that is the more times that I've been able to sit with a person and there's those aha moments mm. when you see the lights go on and you know the, the tears and the repentance and and just and I, for myself as well you know as as i've mm -hmm. gone through things that i've i've you know as betty ann was alluding to that it's it's a self counsel thing mm -hmm. as well um just that the more people that you're able to do that with the, those ones you've been mentoring and it's just like yes they're getting mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. it's like oh god this is what we're mm -hmm. this is so cool mm -hmm. you know and so yeah Amen. so that passion grows because yeah, yeah sure. over time yeah how about you lee yeah i, I would agree i think yeah. it's it's grown for sure i in fact mm -hmm. i have to temper i have to temper it a bit because um I, I don't want to champion champion biblical counseling so much that, that I make it what, what you guys talked about early some some mystical thing that mm -hmm. it's oh I've arrived because mm -hmm. I'm a biblical counselor mm -hmm. uh, but but with at the same time what true biblical counseling espouses and has for decades um, is what I would just call biblical Christianity mm -hmm. yes. and and you would mm -hmm. think like well isn't that a given with the church it's not yeah. Yeah. there's so many churches and so many Christians that have made the pursuit of God uh, um, something uh, or the pursuit of, of, of Christ um, less than what the church is actually called to. And mm -hmm. so, so, they, so then the church begins to pursue something other than Christ. And Christ is still something they pursue, but he's off to the side. Mm -hmm. And so what true biblical counseling has historically espoused is biblical Christianity. So mm -hmm. that's what I, I want to champion, but it's hard not to champion biblical counseling because biblical counseling just historically has done that so well. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just, mm -hmm. and, and this is, this kind of segues into like where, where I, I currently find myself really excited about is just historically in the biblical counseling movement, you, I, I think you see kind of several different waves. I think the first wave, like where it's going to get a ton of notoriety is, I, I think you can go far back as the Puritans. Mm -hmm. I think the Purit mm -hmm. Puritans did some phenomenal biblical counseling, mm -hmm. um, although that's not what they have called what they were doing. But but the, really the first wave of the biblical counseling movement, I, I say falls in with a guy like 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 a Jay Adams. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Jay Adams, like say what you want about him, but Jay Adams took a lot of bullets mm -hmm. for the biblical counseling movement and and he wasn't his fight wasn't from what I understand his fight wasn't with the psyche psychiatric movement or or mm -hmm. psychology in of itself his frustration was with churches and seminaries who were really kind of
of selling their birthright, mm. selling the birthright to care mm. for God's people according to God's word through the power yeah. of the spirit pointing towards the gospel. They were kind of punting or, or, mm. or, or giving over that right and that calling for, mm. for what was out in the culture. And, and, and so then the church had broken people and they then cared for those bro- broken people by referring them out into the culture mm-hmm. rather than fighting mm-hmm. to care for their own. Yes. So Jay Adams took a stand for that. And so that's kind of that first yeah. wave. And then you see the second generation where, where I got, um, institutions like CCF, so guys like David Pallison mm-hmm. or Paul David Tripp or Ed Welch, and mm-hmm. th- these guys really began to put unbelievable academic and theological credibility. Not that it didn't have that before, but they brought that kind of credibility on a main stage um, and, and, and began to produce uh, in f- phenomenal resources, second to none resources for the church, for academic institutions and on and on. Where, where I feel like we are now, and this is why I get excited, where I feel like we are like is in a, in a bit of a third generation where, where biblical counseling has great roots. Um, you, 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 you'd be hard pressed to not find um, the, the reach of biblical counseling all over the world. Maybe mm-hmm. sparse in some places, mm-hmm. but you'd be hard pressed to not find it. Um, are there pockets where we still need to press into? Absolutely. But, but, but what you're seeing now is you're seeing churches who are planting churches that faithfully preach the gospel, which you, again, you assume that, well, doesn't that just always happen? Mm-hmm. No, it doesn't. That's right. You're seeing churches that are planting churches that faithfully proclaim the gospel and faithfully counsel the gospel, mm-hmm. and they're doing it together. Mm-hmm. And so this third generation of yeah. the biblical counseling movement, I, th- I think is that, mm-hmm. where you're seeing the, mm-hmm. the expositing of the word with the counseling of the word happen in the same place. Mm-hmm. And, yes. and again, it's, that's a unique thing, unfortunately, mm-hmm. but it's mm-hmm. happening more and more. And so, mm-hmm. so you, I, I think you can probably tell them a bit excited about this, but that's where I feel like we are right now. And you're seeing more and more churches faithfully proclaim from the stage, mm-hmm. from the pulpit, um, the gospel. And you're seeing just a, a groundswell of counseling, faithful biblical counseling, faithful gospel counseling mm-hmm. happening at the same time. They're meeting in the middle and the culture of the church the Mm -hmm. bodies, the one another is being lived out. Mm -hmm. And so there's less and less need for the private practitioner. Mm -hmm. Probably always gonna need to leverage that for those certain situations, but the body is caring for the body more and more. I just, the picture of the bride doing that is is, is, what I read in the epistles. Mm -hmm. It's what I read. This is what God's purifying us to do. So Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, I'm in on that. So Mm -hmm. yes, very good. Well put. Yeah. So, um, so this this whole idea of this third wave of counseling and counseling happening in the church and we don't kind of have the silo over there we're not catapulting people out of the church to to you know perhaps well-meaning goats you know um we we want we want sheep to be counseling sheep we need to talk sheep um who who does that in the church is that is that uh, the pastor that does that uh, you know you know who 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 are the who are the ones who are supposed to be doing the counseling in the church what do you think Wendy well, um, I'm not part of any bodies that are doing that well. Mm, mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. I think there's some awesome attempts towards that in in our area of Ontario. But um, I I'd love to think that the one anothering that we are commanded to could be happening and would take care of much of what you're. I, I'm in agreement with mm-hmm. you that would take much of the issues of life and they'd be filtered through and people would just be, you know, one anothering mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. very few issues would have to be referred mm-hmm. out. But so that would be kind um, of organically happening. Yes. And, and I, which as yeah. it's supposed to, you yeah. know, people speaking uh, the truth and love yeah, to one yeah. another. And uh-huh. yeah, because I'm just thinking, you know, if the answer is that, um, you know, a church is supposed to go hire uh, a bunch of biblical counselors and that the answer is you just get this team of pastors uh, on staff. That, that just seems like a real expensive mm-hmm. kind of thing to, mm-hmm. to be, you know, is that, is that the answer? What do you, what do you think, Lee? I mean, I, I, I've worked with big churches and, um, and, and when the growth is ferocious, you know this, like mm. when, when, when God's just drawing men and women in and you can't keep up with the growth, I mean, it seems like the natural, the, the, the natural thought process is, well, let, let's hire to fill the need. Mm. And, and that on so many levels makes sense. Um, but, but again, like if you do that too much or go too far with that, you actually cheat what God set up mm-hmm. in, in, in yes. his word for the body to be mm-hmm. the body. And so my frustration with the Western church, with, with and, I, and I'm young, I'm only 37, but, but, but in the years that I've been in church, which is since a young boy, my frustration has grown with how the pastor is the go-to, do all, be all, fix all, nearly mm-hmm. like the priest. Mm-hmm. Like he, mm-hmm. he's got to do all the premarital. He's got to do all the preaching, the Wednesday night mm-hmm. Bible study on top of that. He's mm-hmm. got to do all the hospital visitations. Like he's the guy who does all this because mm-hmm. that's what he's paid to do. Mm-hmm. But, but, 
it's, that's so top heavy, first of all, mm-hmm. and, and no man that I know is capable of all that. That's right. um, and nor are they good at it. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah they, they, right. they may be good at one of them <laughs> yeah. at best, right? Yeah. So, um, but then you see how the body's gifted and how all of those things mm-hmm. that, that he's been charged or he's been expected to do dis- disseminate mm-hmm. uh, across the body. And it's like, mm-hmm. that's, that's how God has set it up. Mm-hmm. So if you just hire it away, mm-hmm. you lose that, even if you hired it away well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So to be able to hire the right people that care for the right situations or refer to the right people in the community that can biblically care for the right situations, mm-hmm. but not at the cost of caring for our own. I think mm-hmm. that's the balance that you're looking for pastorally. And, it's, mm-hmm. and so please don't hear me saying that third generation were there. Mm-hmm. We've got to figure it out. I think that that's where it's headed. Mm-hmm. And that's what I, I feel like we've got to fight to, to establish. Find those professionals in the community that do faithful biblical counseling, that know their craft, mm-hmm. that can help you with those intensive, those situations that are just really difficult, mm-hmm. but not at the forsaking of drawing that broken person into the body mm-hmm. where, where mm-hmm. everyone is cared for. Like in Galatians 6, 1 through 2, I think, talks about this so well, mm-hmm. where, where like it, it describes the body of Christ as being a place where any one caught in any transgression should be able to be brought into mm-hmm. that setting and safely. And that, that caught in any transgression is the same phrase used in, in, in uh, it, when, 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 the, when the woman's caught in the act of adultery and drug before Jesus, it's the same phrase. Mm-hmm. So Paul's purposely using that phrase to say, this is what the church should be like. Mm-hmm. I don't care if you found a woman out in the parking lot caught in the act of adultery, mm-hmm. the church should be a place where she could be brought in mm-hmm. and cared for and brought right to Christ. Mm-hmm. But, but slowly but surely over the years, the church has become a place where you have to dust yourself off yes. to come in the doors. Yeah. Well, when, when that's the culture, good luck trying to get people to confess yeah. in the walls mm-hmm. there. Yeah. That's why they go out because mm-hmm. it's not a safe place. Yeah. So it's got to be a safe place mm-hmm. for life to be met with, mm-hmm. n- not, not avoiding those things, but with the gospel of yes. Jesus Christ. So, mm-hmm. so it's, it's a mighty task, but it's, not a ta- it's a task that God himself has called us to. Mm-hmm. He hadn't say, hey, figure this out. He said, this is what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Get behind what I'm doing mm-hmm. and I'll do it. So I'm like, okay, let's just get behind the Lord and let the spirit lead how we yeah. do this. Mm-hmm. And, and, it, and it creates tons of work and tons of difficulty. There's no easy answers mm-hmm. to it. But I think mm-hmm. that we die trying, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That that's, okay, this is a charge and we're gonna need the spirit mm-hmm. to empower it. So. Yeah. 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 So on some level, we need to be doing what God has told us to do in, in equipping the saints to do the work of the yeah. ministry, right? It can't be all one guy. It can't be just staff. Um, in fact, the, the majority of the ministry, the one-on-one on one ministry needs to be done by the body, to yes. the body, for yeah. the body, right? Yeah. For the glory of God. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's an exciting thing to be, to be part of. Yeah. And I uh, really appreciate uh, you guys. So thank you very mm-hmm. much for being here. Mm-hmm.